Heads. This evening I did have any Father, we come giving you all the praise and the glory for the magnificent things that you have allowed us to do. Father, we thank you for your strength and that you have given us to encounter each day. We ask you to please continue to bless Lynette uh, City School System as a toehold, Father, not only Lynette, but all children and faculty and staff, wherever they may be. And we'll forever give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Second. Okay. All in favor? At this time, Ms. Um, Lynn Barnes will come forward and lead our board members in the oath of office, uh, Board of Education affirmation for principles of school government. As required by the School Board Governance Improvement Act of 2012, I do hereby affirm all of the following principles of educational governance. Number one, that each decision, action, and vote I take or make as a member of the school board shall be based solely on the needs and interests of the students of the system. I do. I do. I do. Yes. Okay, then go ahead and read. Number two, that I take or make no decision, action, or vote to serve or promote my personal, political, or pecuniary interest. I do. I do. Number three, that each decision, action, and vote I take or make shall be based on the educational interest of the school system as a whole. I do. I do. I do. I do. Number four, that I will consider the views of all members of the board and the superintendent before making a decision or taking action on any measure or proposal before the board. I do. I do. Number five, that except to the extent otherwise provided by law, I shall take formal action only upon the written recommendation of and in consultation with the superintendent and that I may not individually or jointly attempt to direct or corrupt the operations of the school system in a manner inconsistent with the discharge of the statutory functions and responsibilities of the superintendent. I do. I do. Number six, that I shall actively promote public support for the school system and a sound statewide system of public education and shall endorse ideas, initiatives, and programs that are designed to improve the quality of public education for all students. I do. I do. Number seven, that I shall attend scheduled meetings and actively participate in school system functions, activities, and training programs that promote quality boardsmanship unless good cause is shown. I do. I do. Number eight, that I shall attend scheduled meetings in order to receive monthly compensation. And affirmed on this 15th day of October 2020. And then please sign. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, moving on down to our approval of minutes. Any motion to approve the minutes? Motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? So moved. Second. Discussion. On page two, you will see a total combined cash balance of two million five hundred seventy-eight thousand four hundred sixteen dollars and fifty-nine cents. Any further discussion? All in favor? Move this one. Uh, At this time, I represent.
Representative Ms. Allison Matthew from W.O. Lance Elementary will come forward and present the elementary school ACIP for the 2020-2021 school year. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, everybody. I'm thrilled to be continuously looking for ways to improve. And I think you have in your packet our strategy map and our improvement plan that gives you plenty of details. But I wanted to highlight tonight just a couple of areas that we've identified as growth areas for us and also some of the steps that we've already taken to dive into each of these areas. The three focus on letters. This is a program through the state of Alabama that really helps increase the teacher's depth of knowledge uh, in terms of literacy, teaching, and learning. Uh, many of our teachers today graduate from college without having the needed skills and tools in order to be able to sit down and teach a student to be able to read. So through letters, we're hoping to shore up that particular weakness. Our teachers also have been trained um, in two other programs, SPIRE and Sound Sensible. Those will allow them to provide intensive intervention for the students that have been identified as struggling with reading or either non-readers at all. So we're looking forward to seeing some results in that area. Our teachers have trained with AMSTI through the state of Alabama also. That's the Alabama Math, Science, and Technology Initiative. They've been provided math manipulatives to help um, provide engaging, relevant math instruction that is aligned to the state standards. So we will be working side by side with an AMSTI representative this year and small groups in order to move us forward in the math area. Um, we are thrilled to be able to say tonight that we have some additional personnel in the English language learner area. We have Ms. Duma that is going to be full-time uh, instruction with our EL students. That's an area that has grown for us and so we are responding with additional support. And with some of our multi-sensory approaches to literacy instruction, we feel that she's going to be able to deliver to our EL students um, a foundation for reading in English that will help them in their other areas. So those are our three areas. We also, the um, district has purchased for us this year iStation. And if you read that term, um, any of your papers, it represents an e-learning opportunity for our students that is adaptive in nature. So in other words, if Ms. Boyd were to come in and take our iStation screener, it would tell us where she is in reading and in math. So that would allow us to be able to serve her most appropriately, and she can also advance at her own rate, even at home. So we're really thrilled about the use of iStation this year. And we feel like our students will use that for remediation, but also for enrichment for students that need to go further. So that's, I think that's it. Are there any questions about our ACIP and where we're headed? Thank you, Ms. Matthew. At this time, I recommend approval of the 2020-2021 ACIP plan for W.O. Lance Elementary School. Make a motion. Motion. Any discussion? All in favor? At this time, Ms. Donna Bell will come forth and discuss the ACIP plan for Lynette Junior High School. Thank you, Ms. Corey and board members. Um, the Junior High School's annual continuous improvement plan, we're going to be focusing on math and reading as we have the past several years. And what we have been doing has been working because we started with about 30% um, math achievement. We're up to 53% math achievement. In reading, we started at about 38%, and now we're up to about 55%. So what we are doing is working, and we're going to continue doing that, where the students have a 25-minute skills class Tuesday through Fridays. Two days we focus on math. One day specifically on reading, um, reading nonfiction. State assessments have nonfiction text. And, um, students just need a way to decode that, break that down, and be able to read and then answer the questions. Um, 
We also offer each student a 50-minute enrichment period where this year uh, W.O. Lance is going to be using eye stations. So junior high school, we're going to continue with Classworks. And it also, we give them a screener, a baseline, and it builds their own um, individualized learning plan. So if they need to go back down to third grade to work on decoding uh, words, then they can. Or if they don't know about uh, fractions, it, it takes them down that level so they can. It also will go up to the ninth grade level for uh, reading and for math to help them if they need to expand. Another area that we're going to continue working on is school climate. This has been positive at Lynette Junior High School, and I would, as we were going over our data, I want to tell you a little bit about um, the survey. So one of the questions for the teacher survey was, which four words best describe, in general, how you feel while at work? 100% of teachers said supportive. Parent survey, the question, which of the four of the following words best describe, in general, the interactions you have with staff at your child's school. The highest was supportive at 78%. Student surveys. Which of the four of the following words best describe in general the interactions you have with adults at your school? Supportive wasn't the highest, but it was one of the top three with 67%. When Mr. Brasco and I go in to do Elliott observation, one of the highest scores was supportive learning environment, which was 3.79 out of four. So that lets me know that it starts and then it trickles down. So the teachers are feeling supportive, they're showing that support to their students, and then their students are going home and telling their parents and the interactions that the parents are having with the staff is supportive. I'm most proud of that. <laughs> um, another area that we're going to try to increase is parental involvement. We'd like to see that increase by at least 5%. Our parents do know that we're here for them and they will call us when they need us. We have uh, recently had some um, PTSO Zoom meetings and some different Zoom sessions for the parents. Um, the participation is not what we would like for it to be, but I do know that they feel welcome and they know that they can call us if they have any questions. One area that we do need to improve upon that um, I'm not proud that we did not do our best last year. I think we did our best, but the uh, results doesn't show that. So it is with our EL learners. And this is an area we're going to focus on. Several of our teachers have put um, EL in their uh, professional learning plan. I have reached out to Classworks to find out what we could do. And so I do not know why I have not thought of this before, but I can actually assign, say if a child comes to us and they don't speak English at all, I can assign them kindergarten level work where they can learn long vowels and learn to speak the English language. So that is something that we are doing now and I currently have that or if they just need to know about prefixes or suffixes, I'm individually assigning those students that work. And that is all I have for our continuing at Lynette Junior High School. Awesome. Thank you, Ms. Bell. I recommend approval of the 2020-2021 ACIP plan for Lynette Junior High School. Give me a motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? At this time, Mr. Lumpkin will come forth and discuss the ACIP plan for Lynette High School. One big thing we're doing right now at the high school is we're transitioning to a new course of study that was adopted last year. Um, we met this past spring and this summer to uh, determine what sort of uh, changes that was going to make to our uh, pathways, the progression of courses. and. Um, we are in what we're calling a soft implementation this year, and we'll be in a full implementation of that next year. Teachers have received PD on that, and they will continue to do so throughout this year. All right. Uh, as Ms. Matthews mentioned, the elementary school has iStation. The uh, junior high school has Classworks. I'm excited that uh, at the high school this year we have a program called My Path, and it's very similar to what they're talking about. Uh, yes, we're going to use it for our intervention services, RTI and reading and math, um, but we're also going to use it as uh, enrichment for those kids that uh, don't necessarily fall into the RTI categories, but uh, we want to push them a little bit further. Uh, so our plan is to do a minimum of one day of math in that, in that week um, in addition to our uh, usual ACT instruction. That's in our 30-minute enrichment period daily. 
Uh, we have a lot of the same things. Like I said, for reading, um, we will also utilize my path. Um, we also have the ACT prep books. A uh, couple years back, we bought full class sets of ACT prep books. So our kids are seeing actual ACT material and ACT level questioning. Our third priority statement is student supports. Um, several things here, several objectives under this one. Uh, first off, we want to increase the success of students transitioning to Lynette High School. Not only those coming to us from the junior high, um, but also those that transfer out of district. Because um, to a lot of people, uh, Lynette's a whole new ball game. They got to get in line and there's a lot to learn here. Um, so just getting them on the right path and uh, getting them used to how uh, used to how we're, we're doing things here is very important to their success. Um, another goal we have this year is to reduce the percentage of students that are chronically absent by 3%. Uh, chronic absenteeism is de defined as 18 or more absences, excused or unexcused, um, within the school year. Um, we are hovering around 15%. Um, it, it varies from year to year but I would like to see that below 10% um, in the near future. And then finally, our uh, last priority area is EL proficiency. Um, as Ms. Bell mentioned, this is, uh, this is a big challenge to us. Um, there's a lot of EL students at the elementary school and there have been for some years now, and now we're starting to really see that at the high school level. Um, so our teachers, uh, we've received some PD on that. Um, and we also had the EL tutor working with them, um, which has been very helpful to us. And that wraps it up for the high school. Are there any questions? from the following employee effective September 17th, 2020. Okay, I need a motion.
will begin with W.O. Lance Elementary School. Everyone knows who the principal is at W.O. Lance Elementary School. That's Mr. Jamie Hurd. If you would come forward, please. to do some of the same things that we've been able to do in years past. 
in the face-to-face -face environment. Lynette Junior High School, for the month of October, LJH has focused on bullying prevention and parental involvement. I'm sure that you have seen some of the um, social media announcements about the activities that are um, that they have engaged in for bullying prevention. Ms. Odom, our school counselor, um, she has planned several bullying prevention activities, such as the students electronically signing the pledge. And so, you know, that's an activity that the students usually engage in each year. They sign the pledge, and so they've still been able to um, work towards having that completed as well. I was very excited about um, this next item that's on the list. Ms. Smith, um, she has conducted Zoom sessions for our parents. Schoology, we know that's the learning management system that we began using this year, and we realized that there, it has been challenging for some of our parents, and so we've been able to conduct Zoom sessions for our parents, and so we're still continuing to work with our parents, even though maybe not necessarily in a face-to-face -face setting, we've been able to use technology to do that. LJH um, has recognized students um, for exhibiting great work ethic. And this has been made possible by one of our partners in education, Berean Baptist Church, I mean Berean Church International. And so we're thankful to Berean for their support of our school. Um, LJH has also been creating their first digital data notebook. And so that is exciting as well. And of course, nine weeks exams are coming up following the fall break. For the high school, um, there's a new Lynette High School um, Facebook page. So if you would, make sure you follow that page as you would. W.O. Lance and Lynette Junior High School and the Lynette Panthers District page, we're pushing out a whole lot of information so that you can stay informed. Uh, and so Lynette High School has a new Facebook page, and they're able to promote extracurricular activities, special opportunities for students, and just to improve communication overall with our stakeholders. And the name of the page is Lynette High School Panthers. So please make sure you follow that page so that you can stay informed on what is going on with Lynette High School. Counselor Ms. Odom, she is conducting counseling sessions with our seniors, and she has been promoting several virtual um, college tours and webinars. So for our high school parents, if you're not friends or if you're not following the Lynette High School page, I encourage you to do so so that you can stay abreast as to what's going on. And Ms. Smith has also conducted um, school of training sessions for parents, as I mentioned before with the, the junior high school. And from the athletic director's desk, uh, Lynette, Lynette is certainly having a solid football season. Um, our current record is 6-2, um, and two, and with both of those losses coming in overtime, if you've been able to attend those games, they were nail biters, both yes. of them. And so we are proud of our football team. Coming up this Friday night, um, our game will be at Randolph County, and we have the opportunity to um, win our fourth region championship in a row. So please come out and support our football team if you are able to. This will be such a huge accomplishment, and we do not take lightly the hard work that our players put into being successful. Um, one thing that Coach Story wanted me to mention um, in this COVID age is that the players and staff, they are doing a good job by continuing to follow the protocol that we put in place um, to fight against COVID. And we've been very fortunate thus far. Um, I know you've seen some cases with some other schools, but so far we've been blessed um, to not have um, that same report on tonight. We're moving forward with our plans to have a basketball season. Uh, and so he definitely wanted me to communicate how much he appreciates the Lynette community, and he said, go Panthers. Uh, my last note is just two notes and reminders just to give you a COVID update for our school district. At this time, since the start of school, we have had one staff quarantine due to exposure and one staff positive. Um, and then the last announcement, we will have a live broadcast tomorrow at 1 o'clock via Facebook Live to discuss the reopening plan for fall 2020. Please, if you can, please tune in so that you can hear the information firsthand coming from me. If you're not able to tune in at the time of the live session, please go back and view it. We will also post it on our district website. We will post any updates to our plan on our district website, but please make sure that you stay um, in tune with what's going on with our school district. We have done a lot. We put in a lot of effort to make sure that we are communicating because we want the entire community to know what's going on with our school. And so I challenge parents, 
family members, friends, even if you do not have a student in school, please join us so that you will know what is going on with Lynette City Schools as we continue to move forward. And that's all I have. All right, thank you so much. We always, we always look forward to that principal's uh, um, superintendent's report because we know we're gonna get a wealth of information. And I just wanna go back and thank everyone for your accomplishments and presentations that were done tonight. That let me know that we have people in our area that's working with our children that are concerned about our students. You know, some school systems, and I work with them all across the state, They, the school board members are fighting with each other, and they are not really concerned about educating the kids and uh, working with parents and getting what they get. We don't have that at Lynette, and I just want to thank you all for all of the, uh, the work and the study and all the work that you put in to help our students and the school board going to school it's not easy to go and attend these sessions and come back to know how we're supposed to act we don't see this stuff on tv holding 10 and 12 hour school board meetings that's not us because we are here for the kids and we're here about educating the kids and i really i really do appreciate that is there anything else to come before the board miss walton yes I would also would like to commend the, the staff of each school for the tremendous amount of work that you do in order to have your plan in effect. I know it takes a lot of time. Every day is different, and you ch have challenges. Sometimes you don't know what the, the answer is going to come from, but you have withstood the test of time. So I just want you to know that we certainly appreciate all the extra work. It doesn't stop at 3. It might stop at 12 or 1 o'clock at night. A lot of people don't know that. But uh, thank you so very much for the tremendous amount of caring that you do. Caring is important. When a student knows that their staff care about them, they work their head off. But if it's no caring and showing compassion for the student, we lose. Thank you so very much for what you do. Okay. Anything else? If not, I need a motion to adjourn. Motion. All in favor? Thank you all again. Any way we can help you, let us know.